In Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 2, it says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, where the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. I just want to ask a simple question today. It's a very simple question. And this question, it's made me think. It's made me wonder, who am I compared to God? And the question that I would like to ask is, who are you to say that God is finished with you? There are many of us who are willing to walk with God, but what we fail to understand is our walk with God is not determined by how far we're willing to go. It's determined by how far God is willing to take us. We do not decide when God is done with us, but for some reason, that's exactly what we try to do. Some of you have been struggling with your sin for years. Some of you have struggled with pornography for over 10 years. Some of you have struggled with alcoholism for over five years. Some of you have struggled with your pride and your ego your entire life. And yet we find it within ourselves to say that God is done with us. God wants nothing to do with us. This is where my story ends. It's been 13 years. Don't you think that if God was done with you, it would have happened in the first year? It would have happened in the second? It would have happened in the third? Do you really think that God would have waited 13 years? God would have taken you this far to leave you now? We sit there and we tell God that it's been 13 years. I can't overcome my pornography. I can't overcome the lust of the flesh. I can't do it. It doesn't matter what your word says, God. I know it says that there is no temptation that has overtaken me that is not uncommon to man. But this temptation, it's uncommon to me. I know that your word says I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. But your strength isn't good enough, God. I don't want it. I don't need it. I know your word says that we are more than conquerors. But I can't conquer this. We're trying to tell God to stop putting pen to paper and to finish our story right here and right now. Your story is far from over, but for some reason you want it to be right now. Do you know what our problem is? Our problem is, is that we're no different than the Israelites who were in the wilderness. See, the Israelites in the wilderness, they lacked faith. And through their lack of faith, they started idolizing pagan gods. There are some of us who are in our wilderness for 13 years, for 20 years, for 50 years, for all the years of our lives. Because in our lack of faith in God, we went and we started idolizing our sin. See, why is it so easy to run to your sin, to run to pornography, to run to alcoholism, to run to your addictions than it is to run to the altar of God? Why is it so easy to give in to your sins, to fall to temptations, to fall to your lust, to fall to your pride and your ego than it is to have faith in God? How can you tell God that your story is over, that God is finished with you when you're not even the author of it? Remember that the wilderness was meant to reveal not to steal. God didn't want to steal 40 years away from the Israelites, but it took 40 years for it to be revealed to the Israelites why they were even in the wilderness in the first place. Their story didn't end in the wilderness and neither does yours. God has not placed you in your wilderness of sin for 13 years, for 20 years, for seven years, for 50 years, for all your life, for you to perish and die in the wilderness. No, God has placed you in the wilderness for a much greater reason than this. Don't you see the parallels? When the Israelites were in the wilderness for 40 years, God still provided enough for them to get by. You have been living in your sin for 13 years, and yet God has still provided for you. 13 years of living in sin, 20 years of living in sin, five years of living in sin, and yet you're still here. Not by your own will, not by your own doing, not even by your own strength. God didn't take you this far just to take you this far. Remember that in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 9, it says, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. You are not in your wilderness to perish and die, but you are in your wilderness to have life and life everlasting. Your story isn't finished, so stop saying that it is. God's not done with you because you say so. The moment that God's done with you, you will know. But this is not the moment. Your story isn't over. Come and reach repentance. Repent of all your sins. Repent of all your wrongdoings. I know it's been 13 years. I know it's been 20 years. I know it's been five years. But today can be the day that you reach your promised land. Your story isn't over. You might just be one page away from your victory. You might just be one chapter away from your promise. You may just be one sentence away from your deliverance. It ain't over until God says it's over. And by the looks of it, it doesn't seem like God's done yet. So, keep going.